Gemma, um, not to whinge, but last, it, it's more interesting. <laughs> last year I got attacked by, uh, by the ABC as a racist because I said that uh, thanks to mass immigration and other stuff that we can't any longer talk about the, uh, an us, you know, sort of a sort of a cultural identity that Australians all share. So we can't assume that us or we means people who all believe the same things anymore. And yet, you know, it's interesting that the University of uh, Western Sydney has put in a submission to a parliamentary inquiry now saying that the idea that there is a British or white European culture that constitutes a core Australian national identity has in fact, in its words, become redundant and is based on imperialist logic and uh, Australia's national identity should in fact be based on the cultures of the indigenous peoples of this country, which make up about, I think, two and a half percent, something like that, maybe a bit more. Uh, your reaction? I did, I did read that um, earlier, Andrew, and, and was somewhat bemused because I guess my next question would be, well, what do they mean by that? What, what does, mm. you know, it's a very broad statement and to my mind it's a pretty divisive statement. I don't know, and, and look, as you know, my, my mother's a second or third generation uh, Australian born in Brizzy and sort of a, a big mix of backgrounds, everything from a bit of Scottish to a bit of, you know, old school Prussian and my father came to Australia in 50 on a boat so I don't I, if I was to say an Australian value I, in my mind it is it is a licorice all sorts of um, of our mm -hmm. indigenous brothers and sisters to our migrants to to uh, you know convicts it, it, it's so race is, is fraught and it's weaponized and it's divisive and, and when I read that story it, it, pro, it presented me at least with way more questions than it answered. It certainly didn't put a proposal on the table that was clear to understand or clear to articulate what the actual outcome would be. Sometimes I wonder, and uh, you know, it's been many years since I was at university and Andrew Clemel and I were in the same class at university, so he can, he can <laughs> really? nod in agreement. <laughs> yes, we yes. were. But many years since we were at university but it seems to me that so much of academia these days is about things to be conflicted about finding things to 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 cause division about and 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 not in a way that is an inquiring mind and seeking to to understand and to know i read that and i and i just my heart sank a little bit and thought what are these clowns trying to do they're not actually helping to 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 build uh anything useful into the word useful they're not helping to to build a better Australia I don't think with comments like that I think it's incredibly divisive and and, and not particularly well explained well Andrew using your uh, fabulously well-educated brain uh, on this um, <laughs> on this subject Top of the uh, class. What did you, well you've been to university I skipped out a, after a year after I got a job offer at the age but what's your reaction to this uh, to this statement well, I think multiculturalism is pretty interesting and, uh, uh, you know, the, the growth of it. And we've seen successive federal governments grow immigration. They've made it more about skilled than family reunion, as we know, to prop up the budget because it helps the budget. And that's a bit cont uh, controversial. Um, uh, but uh, uh, an interesting statistic I've come across the last few months is that 36 per cent of people in Sydney are born from outside Australia. So I googled mm. Perth since I knew Gemma was coming on, and 32% 30, <laughs> of, of people in Perth were yeah. born from outside Australia. Mind you, there's more English over there. Let's face it, it's, it's a big cohort. Yeah, yeah lots. But lots, uh, lots, but, yeah. but but look, I think well, I got an English dad, but I don't see myself as um, uh, anywhere from the, the a British kind of background. I mean, no, quite no, frankly, neither. living there a couple of years and going the cricket and hearing you you all live in the convict colony was enough for me turn me into a Republican, but <laughs> look, I, th I think that, um, I, I, think, I think they've sort of half got it here because they talk about Sydney becoming an Asian city and this sort of thing, and I think when people come here, they, uh, you know, like Gemma's Italian dad, they eventually have a, a kind of Australian value, not, not, not a sort of yeah, British absolutely. or European, That's but when, where, where, they they lose me, where they lose me a bit is kind of to say, well, we should all, all go to the Indigenous thing, like we've got to really respect the traditions of the Indigenous peoples here and all that, but we can't identify yeah. with it. That's a step to, too to, far, you know. 
To your point, Andrew, Andrew Clinnell, that's a really important point because it's also, my take on that is also incredibly, um, it's incredibly wrong to assume that all, all Indigenous people are homogenous in their views. It's like, you know, you can yeah. talk about Italy and the North Correct. is so different from the South. So they're saying we need to, we need to base it on uh, Indigenous values and Indigenous culture. Well, which one are you talking about? Are you talking about the Noongar people? Are you talking about Koori people? Are you talking about different, um, um, you know, areas of that, Australia? That's a good point. It, it is just... It is just Gemma, 